Whenever I have been given the opportunity to introduce Buddhism, I always uh, make it a point to explain Buddhism in terms of two principles. One is uh, a development of a philosophical viewpoint based on the understanding of or appreciation of interdependent nature of reality. And then the second principle is the principle of nonviolence, which is the actual action of a Buddhist practitioner and deriving from that view of interdependent nature of reality. <laughs> So the meaning of non-harming or non-violent behavior or action or conduct is that, uh, if possible, um, one should help others. And if not, at least one should refrain from harming others. That is the essence of the principle of non-violence, non-violent action. So, um, from a technical sort of to, to explain this, these principles in the technical Buddhist language, then uh, uh, you can appreciate that in terms of uh, what in Buddhism is called as taking refuge in the three jewels, Traratna, and uh, uh, what is known as the generation of the altruistic mind or enhancement of one's good heart. Um, as it is very evident that um, the idea of or, or the practice of generation of the mind entails committing oneself in an act activities that are aimed primarily at helping others. And uh, whereas the practice of taking refuge in the three jewels lays the foundation for the individual practitioner to uh, s sort of uh, live a way of life within uh, uh, an ethically disciplined uh, lifestyle uh, which avoids uh, engaging in actions that are harmful to others, thus by living according to the laws of karma or laws of causality. So, the day in the same day in Yamne, Yawjolia, Yamjun Yamne Mena, Simji Yamne Yamare. Therefore, um, unless the individual practitioner has a, a good uh, foundational uh, uh, experience or practice of taking refuge in the three jewels, it is not possible to have uh, a high level of realization of bodhicitta or generation of the altruistic mind. <laughs> Therefore, um, uh, from the Buddhist point of view, uh, the, the demarcation or the line that distinguishes uh, between uh, a practicing Buddhist and, and a non-practicing uh, sorry, practicing Buddhist and someone who is not a Buddhist is made on the basis of whether or not the individual has taken refuge in the three jewels. Uh, so when we talk about uh, taking refuge in the three jewels, we should not have the notion that uh, it involves a ceremony where you take the refuge from a master or something like that. And uh, when by simply by participating in such a ceremony, you uh, become a Buddhist. That's not, uh, not, not, uh, not, not the point. The point is, if even without a master, if you, as a result of your own reflection, uh, become fully convinced uh, in the um, validity of the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha as the true, uh, true 
ultimate object of refuge, and then entrust your spiritual uh, well-being in these objects of refuge. And that's the point when you become a Buddhist. You have taken refuge in the three jewels. Whereas if even though you might have taken, uh, participated in a ceremony, but if there is any doubt in your apprehensions, in your mind, about the validity of Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha as being ultimate objects of refuge, that very uh, suspicion or doubt sort of uh, 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 rules you out uh, from being a uh, practicing Buddhist. <clears throat> Therefore, for a practicing Buddhist, it is important to understand uh, who these objects of refuge are or what these objects of refuge are, the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. Uh, so when we speak about Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha, and when we uh, speak particularly about uh, Buddha, uh, we should not uh, confine our understanding of the, the term Buddha only to the historical uh, person who um, uh, came to India, uh, who taught a certain a spiritual way of life, and so on. Rather, our understanding of the concept of Buddhahood should be based on uh, levels of consciousness or levels of spiritual realization. So it is a spiritual uh, sort of uh, state of being uh, that has to be understood. So therefore, uh, we can, in, in, in Buddhist scriptures, we can speak about past Buddhas, Buddhas of the past, Buddhas of the present, and Buddhas of the future. <clears throat> so uh, the question now is to uh, try to develop an understanding of how does uh, a Buddha come into being? How does a fully enlightened being uh, uh, come into being? So when we think about uh, Buddhahood, uh, certainly we will be reflecting upon the question of whether it is possible for an individual to attain such a state or not, or to become a fully enlightened being, to become a Buddha. So here we find that the key really lies in understanding the nature of dharma. Because if dharma exists, then certainly sangha will exist. Uh, uh, sangha members who will have uh, engaged in the path of the dharma and have realized and actualized dharma. And if the sangha members exist, sangha with the realization of dharma exist, uh, who have uh, uh, reached stages of uh, levels of spiritual uh, states where they have overcome uh, at least gross levels of uh, uh, negativities and, and afflictive emotions. If that is possible, then we can envision the possibility of attaining total freedom from these negativities and afflictive emotional states. And that state uh, is, the, is the Buddha. So we find here that the key really lies in understanding the nature of Dharma. <clears throat> So when we talk about uh, the Dharma jewel, then here, of course, we are talking about uh, the two dimensions or the two aspects of the Dharma. One is the path that leads to cessation, and one is the, the cessation itself, cessation of suffering and, and afflictive emotions. Uh, so when we are talking about dharma here, I think one has to be able to make a distinction between the gen sort of uh, the usage of dharma as a kind of a, a generic term, uh, which covers also the scriptural dharma as well. And this is uh, the, the generic term is, is the sublime dharma, 
which refers to the Buddha's teaching as well. Um, whereas when, um, sort of the Buddha's teaching and the realizations that are um, d- based on the practice of the scriptural uh, dharma. But whereas when we are talking about dharma within the context of the three jewels, we are talking about the dharma jewel here. <coughs> here, uh, dharma should be understood in terms of cessation, true cessation, or the, the, re- the parts that lead to that cessation. Because it is only on the basis of understanding uh, the true cessation and the path leading to that cessation, then we can have some concept of arhat ship or state of liberation. Therefore, uh, in one of the sutras, the sutra known as the Pratita Samupada Sutra, uh, Buddha stated that uh, whoever uh, uh, perceives uh, the interdependent nature of reality, the dependent origination, the principle of dependent origination, uh, perceives, uh, sees uh, the Dharma. And whoever sees the Dharma sees the Buddha <coughs> or the Tathagata. So when we try to understand So when we try to understand this statement of the Buddha in the scripture, uh, whereby he states that whoever perceives uh, the interdependent nature of reality perceives the Dharma, and whoever perceives the Dharma perceives the Buddha. Uh, 